Five seconds out. Three, two, one, and we're up, opens in. Sod. Three poly seven, we're in the history garage. One down, we need everybody is stable. Star medics, uh, gunshot wound victims. Q grip. This is the man authorities believe was shot and killed by MUPD last night after a manhunt led officers surging downtown in the dark. He's a convicted rapist who had only been on parole for six days before he was killed. Good evening, I'm Brittany Peeper. We're live out here at Hitch Street Garage. This is where the shooting Stand actually boxes. took place last night. It's pretty calm here now. It's back open to cars, but last night it was a crime scene. We have team coverage on what happened late last night. More information on that suspect and what led to an apology from MU. KOMU 8's Teague Julie Panko's live just down the street from me with reaction from residents who saw the whole situation unfold last night. Maria Love shot. is in the studio with information about MU Alert. That's the system that lets staff, faculty, and students know about emergencies on campus. But first, let's take a look Britain. at the very latest details in this case. Here's what we know so far. The Missouri State Highway Graphic Patrol has next. taken over the investigation into last night's shooting. At this point, authorities are still working to confirm the identity of the suspect, but CPD said last night that they are 95% sure it was the man, that the man killed was 51-year-old Mark Adair. MUPD also says all indications point to that it was him. Authorities say this entire ordeal started with an armed robbery and carjacking at Same Mosher's on Keene Street around 5.30 last night. Now, you may know Mosher's better as Patricia's. It recently had a name change, but that's the grocery store over there on North Keene. They say Adair Graphic. got away from there Brit on Live. foot Next. and was later spotted at Rose Music Hall, formerly known as Mojo's, where he's accused of a second carjacking. That's when police say he headed here to Hitch Street Garage, and police say that they were involved in some sort of physical confrontation with Adair before he was shot and killed. Now, KOMUH Jeremy Strank talked and with the Missouri State Highway Patrol just a few hours ago. So tell us, what did they have to say about the investigation as they take it over now? Yeah, I talked with Sergeant Kevin Hunter. He said at this point in the investigation, the most the main focus for them is identifying the uh, suspect and confirming that. They said there is good reason to believe that the suspect is Adair based on previous events last night. But they said until they get Stand the autopsy side. back and have fingerprint confirmation, they won't know for sure. There's a Sounds lot out in. there about who he's believed to be, and that's reasonable, reasonable Turning assumption based on all the information at hand. But we would like to ultimately confirm that with fingerprint evidence. Thank you. Stand by live trans to develop. Hunter also said that once the autopsy is complete, there will be a report compiled with all of the information. All right. Now, in addition to this investigation, lots of people witnessed what was going on last night. Many from right down the street from where we are right now. A lot of apartment buildings in this area Teague where they could next. watch from their balcony. KOMU8's Teague Dooley Panko talked to some of the witnesses about what they saw. Many of the witnesses watched the crime scene unfold from their own apartment balconies. So these balconies were full last night of people trying to figure out what was going on right across the street at the Hit Street Garage. Many of the people I spoke with said they were very surprised that it happened in this kind of area. So that's in. John Paul and his pup Aspen usually have We're nothing to worry about living through. downtown. Like this is a nice area of town. Seconds. But last night was different. Trying to fall asleep and then I hear what sounded like two pops. But it didn't end there. And I sat up. So it sounded like gunshots, we'll but it wasn't shot. like we'll come back a for to sure FS2 thing. Next. And then After that, we will go about back to six Brittany. more shots rang out rapidly. And I knew at that point, like, there was something going on in the garage. Paul and his neighbors watched anxiously from their balconies onto the scene below. It just looked like chaos. Everyone was running around. Nobody, like, nobody out About here that was already out here knew what was going on. And it was just an intimidating time. Paul says last night could affect him for a while. I walked in the parking garage every day. I parked my motorcycle there. So it's kind of nerve-wracking, though, at night to know that, like, somebody has been killed there. Thank you. Stand by, Britt. Yeah. Some witnesses got up close and personal with the crime scene last night and took some pictures, sent them to us, but unfortunately they were too graphic to show you on air. Reporting live in Columbia, I'm T. Julie Panko, KMU 8 News. Thank you, Britt. Come on. 
During the chaos last night, MU students were not notified about the manhunt or the shooting until after the whole ordeal was over. And students took to social media right away complaining about feeling like they were left in the dark. Two and a half hours ago, MUPD sent out an email apology. It says students should have been notified immediately when the university was contacted by Columbia PD. That statement said, quote, the University of Missouri failed to follow established protocols and procedures alerting the MU community in a timely manner. Change Specifically, it. the MU alert Box system was not you, activated when it should have been, and we apologize to our community. KOMUA's Maria Love tells us how students felt about being unaware of this situation. Thank you. The university spent a great deal of time and effort getting students to sign up for text and email alerts. Alerts students hoped would give them a heads up in a dangerous situation. KMU8 anchor Christian Bryant tweeted this photo at 11.04 last night, and students were not notified by the university Packages until about 30 minute minutes later. I spoke with students on campus this morning, and they had a few concerns. Back in. A lot of upset students tweeted Wednesday night dropped. about not knowing about the Hit Street Garage shooting until after it was over. MU Alert sent out a text message to students around 1139 alerting them of a shooting. But students who got that text message said they should have been notified earlier. I know what was going on until the whole thing was over with. MU Alerts should have posted something and told us that this event was going on and we knew, so we knew that campus wasn't safe. Another student on campus says he was on the scene the entire time and received nothing. I probably saw 20 or 25 different police cars and vehicles and I mean we didn't have any idea what was going on so and then we hear shots and then they send it out so it was a little bit not in order. Others say they were just glad to be notified. It's good to get the text and like at least for people who say it was too late, at least you got the text early in the morning when you woke up. The alert says, quote, during a search for a suspect in an armed robbery, Columbia police asked the, get up the police PC department shot. for assistance. The suspect was located and engaged police who shot and killed him. The campus is About safe 10 at seconds this time. Out. MUPD's apology email Thursday says safety and security is its top priority and Stand all procedures four. will be corrected. Q4. To see the full apology statement we received Stand by from Brit. our MUPD email, visit our website at KOMU.com. Q Brit. Four moves to the RPS. After this shooting, KOMU8 did some digging to find out more about Mark Adair's criminal past. As we told you earlier, Missouri Corrections granted him parole last Friday after a long list of crimes and a 30-year sentence. KOMU8's Raven Brown takes a look at that criminal history. Q. I went to the courthouse early this morning to find out what all Adair has been convicted of and found a long list of results. And package in. Shots fired around MU's college campus late Wednesday night after police looked for suspect Mark Adair. After searching online, we found that this wasn't Adair's first offense, an encounter with the police. We went to the courthouse and dug through multiple court records this morning of multiple convictions against Adair. The most notable offense, Adair was sentenced to 30 years as a sex offender for raping a 9-year-old girl. I dug through KSEC to find six different offenses Adair has been convicted of since 1985 that all occurred in Boone County. About Adair was convicted of burglary in, in the second degree, stealing, drug possession, and assault. We looked for the probable cause statements, but the documents were not available. Uh, At the time dropped. of his death, off the Adair was on parole for weather. two active offenses, kidnapping and burglary. Q4. Can we... KMU 8 has filed a request to get the probable cause statements on all the crimes Adair has been convicted of. Yep. Four spins. We have all of our stories from last night through today on this situation on KOMU.com. There's also a storify there and pictures from our viewers, and we'll continue to update Red it as it, we get new four. information. Again, you can find that all on KOMU.com, and we'll have another round of live team coverage Stand tonight at 9 and 10. For now, let's send it back to Jim in the studio. Q4. All right, Brittany, thank you very much. There was another shooting last night. The Boone County Sheriff's Department has issued an arrest warrant for a double shooting on Demerit Drive last night. 27-year-old Columbia resident Eddie Lee Holmes Jr. is facing Stand two counts video. of unlawful use of a weapon and two counts of armed criminal action. Video. Deputies say two victims were shot in their car. They have non-life-threatening wounds. They took off to a nearby Phillips 66 where they called 911. The Sheriff's Department admits a spike in gun violence. So that's in. Displaying it, discharging rounds. Um, and this is, uh, you know, the sheriff likes to talk about 
people don't fist fight anymore. They pull out guns. Q4, stand by five. Crime Stoppers is offering a reward with anyone for anyone with information on last night's shooting. You can call 875 TIPS. Now let's send it over to Kenton for a check of the mid Missouri forecast. Kenton, what do you have for us? And Q. Jim, well, I have much warmer temperatures than what we've been so. seeing over the past few days. Currently, 74 in Columbia, 76 in Jefferson City, 77 in Boonville, and 74 in Versailles, 75 at the Ozarks. Tonight, getting into the 60s this evening, clouds will be clearing out. We're seeing plenty of stars out tonight, and then by sunrise, we're still going to be seeing mostly sunny skies. 58 there for a high for a low temperature, actually. By noon, we're already into the 70s, and by tomorrow afternoon, we're getting into the upper 70s, even a few degrees warmer than we're at right now. Coming up after the break, I'm going to have a breakdown of your weekend forecast, including storm possibilities and, of course, an eight-day forecast. It's all coming up after this. Break. Five out, stand by. Stand by. Up cube. Welcome back to KMU8 News at 6 o'clock on a Thursday. You're taking a live look over the Lake of the Ozarks, a beautiful one out there. Temperatures in the 70s in the Ozarks. We're seeing blue sky and some clouds mixed in with that as well. That's really going to continue over a night tonight. Mostly clear skies expected, but Super. I think we will definitely still have some clouds all throughout mid-Missouri. Getting right into your precipcast, you can see some rain over to our west as it approaches Missouri, though it's all dissipating. Not expecting any of it for mid-Missouri tonight or even throughout the day on Friday. It's going to be a dry next 24 hours to actually almost almost 48 hours as well. But by 6.30 a.m. on Friday, still seeing mostly clear skies throughout the day partly to mostly sunny. We will still see passing clouds off and on just like we have today, actually. On Friday, 5 p.m., heading home from work, the last day of the week, still going to be mostly sunny. And again, we are going to have temperatures even a few degrees warmer than we're at right now. Otherwise, overnight and into Saturday morning, clouds are going to be increasing. Here's 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. We do have this rain already starting to build up right over into Kansas. It will move into our area on Saturday afternoon. Here is 2 p.m. Saturday. It's already moving into the Ozark region. Kansas City seeing some rain at this point as well. It will continue its uh, northeasterly trek throughout the rest of the afternoon and into the evening hours as well. You can see in these yellow and orange contours, that's just showing heavier rain. I do think thunderstorm activity is certainly possible, though, on Saturday evening and overnight as well. Right now, severe-wise, not looking significant, but it's something I'm still keeping my eye on, and we will continue to keep you updated on it. We're not quite out of the woods severe weather-wise yet, but it is not looking like a significant outbreak at this point. So Saturday evening, seeing this all, again, move through. With some places, we'll see quite a bit of rain, actually, here on Saturday night. Otherwise, by Sunday at 6.30 a.m., it's sunrise, actually, and we are going to see a lot of cloud cover, and we're waiting for more rain to develop behind this system, and it will be moving in. It's looking like for Saturday afternoon, once or for Sunday afternoon once again, so we can expect another rainy one and possibly more thunderstorms as well. Otherwise, tonight, your low temperature is going to be 57 degrees around sunrise tomorrow morning. Southeast winds, five, right around five miles an hour, so nothing much to worry about there. Tomorrow, 79 is going to be a high temperature all across mid-Missouri. Some of us, if we do see more, more sun than clouds, will possibly get up above that 80-degree mark. It's something we'll watch for. We've only got up to 81 so far this year in Columbia. Southeast winds 5 to 10 miles an hour. The next few days, we are going to see temperatures still in the 70s all Stand weekend long school. with those late-day showers and thunderstorms. On Saturday, on Sunday, again, afternoon mainly, going to see more showers and thunderstorms rolling through. Right, 62 then on Monday. This weekend storm is all associated with the cold front, so we'll be a, just about 10 degrees cooler heading into next week. But it is looking mainly dry besides Wednesday night and Thursday morning. Could see a possible rain shower move through. We'll keep you updated as that moves closer. Your weather IQ question for the day. When air pressure drops, well water uh, rises. It does. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I had to think Stick that one in. for a second. You did, but you got it right away. Rises. It does indeed. Kenton, thank you very much. We'll be right back. Break. Stand by. Up to Jim. Most Missouri fire departments rely on Jack, volunteers. Next package runs Today, a minute Missouri 16. House unanimously passed a bill to give those volunteers a tax break. KMU8's Connor Handel takes a look. Boone County Volunteer Fire Captain Darren Day says volunteer firefighters are exactly what they sound like. I personally do some online teaching and, and I'm mostly a stay-at-home dad. Aside from the free training they That's received, the right volunteer super. firefighters receive just $5 for each call they respond to, money it meant to help pay for their gas. The House bill would allow volunteers with 12 hours of yearly training to file for a $500 tax deduction and those with 36 hours of training to file for a $1,000 deduction. 
Boone County Fire says its volunteers accumulate around 300 training hours each year. So you may be wondering why the bill requires so few hours. We had to start off with somewhere, um, and we didn't want to set the scale so high that it wasn't reachable in some of these smaller municipalities. Edward says as long as you can show the 12 hours of training, you can get the tax deduction. But Day isn't concerned about residents taking advantage of it, as those not in the fire department would have to cover the training costs out of pocket, classes that cost about $1,000. You'd inevitably end up paying more for the class to get the deduction. You about know, 20 so seconds it's remaining. not such a wash financially. It's, it costs you money. If made into law, Edwards says the state would see about half a million dollars less stand in tax revenue next year. Connor Handel, KMU at News, Columbia. Q4, stand by five. The bill goes to the Senate next. Edwards predicts the bill will become law. The five. Royals looking to start a new winning streak. We've got afternoon highlights. Kansas City, Minnesota, plus the Cardinals and the Brewers. Sports is next. Break. Ten seconds, stand by. Stand by. Open. Now, from the Ford Sports Desk, KOMU 8 Sports. Ring to queue. Hi, everyone. The Royals won their first seven games of the season. Now they've suffered back-to-back -back losses. There. The Minnesota Twins halted Kansas City's winning streak Wednesday night and then handed the Royals another loss this afternoon. Ned Yo's squad had dominated the Twins in recent years, winning five consecutive series, but not this time. Although it looked good early, Lorenzo Kane hits a two-run homer over the left field wall, two-zip Royals. But then in the second inning, the Twins guy named Vargas got the better of the Royals guy named Vargas. Kenny Vargas batting from Minnesota against Royals lefty Jason Vargas and Kenny connects for this one. It's a home run and the ball game is tied at two. More trouble for the Royals than in the third inning. Trevor Plouffe hits a grounder to Mike Moustakis at third. Nice stop, but the throw not as nice. Torrey Hunter races home and scores. Twins had the lead. They would never give up that lead. Kurt Suzuki off Royal reliever Chris Young for a two-run homer. Minnesota took an 8-3 lead and held off Kansas City for an 8-5 final. The Cards and Brewers in the deciding game of their series at Bush Stadium this afternoon. John Lackey on the mound for St. Louis. And he gets the strikeout early of Gerardo Parra. Through five, Matt Fires was just as good for Milwaukee. Look at that as he freezes his counterpart, Lackey. Did not allow a run, but the Cards break through in the sixth. Matt Holliday drives in Matt Carpenter, single to center. And the Cardinals had a 1-0 lead. Mark Reynolds got the start at first base for St. Louis today. And he delivered for the Cardinals. This is a drive deep to center field. All the way back to the wall, Holliday scores. Johnny Peralta heads home in an attempt to score. He is thrown out at the plate, but the cards behind Lackey's strong start blank the Brewers and win the series for zip. Mizzou will hold its annual black and gold football game Saturday afternoon. A late start time this year, 4 o'clock for the kickoff. The black and gold game marks the end of spring practice for the Tigers. Quarterback Matty Mock returns for his junior season with a wealth of experience after leading the team to an 11-3 record last season. His receiving core, though, has hardly any experience after seniors Jimmy Hunt, Bud Sasser, and Darius White all started last season and used up their eligibility. Coming up at 10, we'll hear from Coach Gary Pinkle and Tigers center Evan Boehm looking ahead to the black and gold game coming up Saturday. LSU eliminated the Missouri Tiger tennis team from the SEC tournament this afternoon in Columbia, South Carolina. The six-seeded LSU Tigers stopped the 14th-seeded Mizzou Tigers 4-1. The Tigers don't come away empty, though. The Missouri Tigers, that is. They upset South Carolina in the first round of the tournament Wednesday to advance to today's match against LSU before losing. That's sports. Break. Up you, Jim. Coming up on KOMU 8 News at 9 and 10, a timeline of last night's shooting if from a grocery store to a parking garage plus student reaction to MU's apology. Kenton? Kenton. Let's take a look at satellite and radar, and we're seeing a lot of rain towards the west of us and even to the south of us, actually severe weather into parts of the Texas Panhandle and even down uh, towards Houston as well. But we are clear in Missouri, and guess what? All this rain is not going to affect us. It's all going to dissipate before it reaches us in Missouri. So we are just going to be seeing clear skies tonight, mostly clear. Still some passing clouds, though. 
Temperatures in the 60s this evening. We're going to be in the upper 50s by sunrise. Partly sunny tomorrow afternoon, 70s midday, 80 possible tomorrow afternoon. If not, we'll still be in the upper 70s, a little warmer than today. Still going to be minorly humid as well. Otherwise, on Saturday afternoon, these showers and thunderstorms look to move in, continue into the evening and overnight hours. Once again, on Sunday afternoon and overnight, more showers and thunderstorms move in. If I have to pick a day where severe weather is most possible, I would say Sunday, although that day is still not sold. So we'll uh, keep you updated on that as it moves closer. That's all associated with a cold front, so we're going to be a little cooler headed into next week. Temperatures in the 60s, mostly sunny on Monday and Tuesday. I would say Wednesday night into Thursday, we could see another shower or thunderstorm. But of course, we'll keep you updated as it moves closer. Some afternoon baseball, Chris. Right, the Cardinals won over the Brewers, so they win their series. The Royals lost to the Twins, so they lose their series. All right, black and gold game golf tournament tomorrow at Hawthorne. <laughs> nice weather. Nice weather. I bet the weather will be nicer than Jim's golf. That's our oh, time for now. Thanks on. for joining oh. us.